Good afternoon folks, welcome back to Advanced Higher Chemistry. I um, thought to start with some pretty coloured props because today we are working on the pH um, of salts. Now, a salt, uh, not the type of a salt uh, that gets you in trouble, but a salt um, is just an ionic compound formed between an acid and a base. All the way back from National 5. Turned out to be true. So acid plus base makes a salt. It often makes something else as well, but we're only really interested in this today. Now back at National 5, we were just dealing with normal acids and normal bases. I say normal, I should of course say strong acids and strong bases. There was one example that wasn't strong and that was ammonia, but um, we never worried about the pH of these salts and people just assumed that they were neutral. However, if you have a look at my incredible props here, you will see that we have got some in the middle tissue. But I'm hoping the camera picks up the light here actually, otherwise I'm going to look like a muppet. Uh, let's turn the light up a touch and see the colours. We have got some sodium chloride in green, dissolved in water with a splash of pH indicator. Let's pick an appropriate colour, in case you can't see this. Colourblind people, poor souls, really struggle with this section, I wonder why. Um, this here is ammonium chloride, so NH4Cl at a pH of around about, well, five-ish. You never normally see the pH of five, it normally tends to click straight down to red. Um, because we're usually dealing with strong acids where there's loads and loads of hydrogen ions simultaneously available. Up here at the top in light blue, we have got a sodium ethanoate. So CH3COO. So beloved of cheap salt and vinegar crisps. Um, let's have a look at why these salts, obviously made from an acid and a base. I'm hoping that you can work out that the sodium chloride is made from sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, both of which are strong. I'll try and put a link up here, by the way, to my strong and weak video, uh, strong and weak acids and bases video, if you haven't seen it. Go and watch it, because you won't know what I'm talking about otherwise. So we have got a strong acid, uh, strong base, sorry, and a strong acid, and you can see the pH is neutral. Down here, we have got a weak base. That was ammonia. Uh, and a strong acid, which would have been hydrochloric acid. So this was ammonia and hydrochloric acid. Sorry about that pen. Time to find a new one. And then up at the top here, we had sodium hydroxide and we had ethanoic acid. Now, I did label the acid. I didn't label it strong because I'm a muppet. I apologise. Let me do that. A weak base and a strong acid. So weak base, strong acid. Strong base, strong acid. This time, still way around. We have got a strong base. And a weak acid. And obviously, the strength is affecting the pH of the salt. The Love Island explanation, the simple explanation for that is almost like you could picture it like a tug of war. Whichever one is the stronger, then the pH of the salt ends up going in that direction. So we had a strong acid, which obviously has a low pH, so that's why we end up with a salt with a lower pH. And we up here, we had a strong base, so it has pulled the pH of the salt up to a higher um, pH. Uh, and here it was an equal tug of war. That, as I said, is the Love Island explanation, but I'm just about to give you the correct one. Right, here's our question. Sorry about the noise, the background noise in the last one. I just realised that the kitchen door was open and my stupid squeaky oven fan was doing its squeaky thing. How can a salt affect the pH of the water anyway? Because the salt does not, and doesn't, it doesn't release H plus or H minus or OH minus into the water. Um, so how can it change the pH in the first place? Let's have a look. Let's split um, this. Let's split this page down here. On the left hand side, we will have ourselves a beaker of water. And we'll have the same beaker on the right hand side. Now, primarily, of course, the water is doing its water thing. Sorry, I'll never do that again. The water is doing its water thing. So we've actually got H2O, which is busy doing the water equilibrium and splitting apart form hydrogen and hydroxide, as I mentioned also in my weak acids and bases video. And here's our other glass of water doing precisely the same thing. I'm dropping a big hint to the answer to this question here, by the way. 
Uh, into the beaker on the left, we are going to plop some um, ammonium chloride, I think. Um, so let's plop some ammonium chloride into it. The ammonium chloride will dissolve and you will have ammonium ions and chloride ions floating about in the water. Um, now, the ammonium ions are going to react with the hydroxide ions and they will form... Sorry about the shadows as well, by the way. I'm filming this at night and I've just realised I'm drawing shadows over my own writing. Um, hang on, I might pause this and change my lighting setup. Not perfect, but I'll have to do. Oh, my apologies. Go and get a much better quality YouTube chemistry tutor than me. So, ammonium, positive charge, hydroxide, negative charge. These will indeed combine with each other. So, ammonium and hydroxide will combine. And they will form an equilibrium mixture of ammonia molecules and water. Because that's what ammonia does. It's a weak base. In fact... Uh, this equilibrium much prefers to be on the molecule side, so you're going to steal away some of these hydroxides. Now, if you do that, uh, the water equilibrium is going to continue doing its equilibrium thing. Um, uh, this backward reaction here will actually slow down because there are less of these. And the forward reaction will continue and you will end up with an excess of hydrogen ions, which makes your water beaker overall end up with a pH of less than 7. Sorry, that's atrocious. Less than seven. Um, so that's why ammonium chloride, putting it into a beaker of water, appears to be a, an acidic salt. It's not the salt at all, it's acidic. It's quite cool chemistry. The salt contains a weak uh, base. So the weak base prefers to be on the molecule side, and these get removed, not totally removed, but they do get reduced, which leaves you with an excess of hydrogen ions and your beaker of water looks like it has become acid, because it has, I suppose, by definition. Um, let's have a look over here um, at the other salt we had, which was sodium thanoate. If we plop that into the water, you will get sodium ions being reduced, released, sorry, uh, and you'll get ethanoate ions being released. I'm hoping you could probably pause this video and tell me exactly why the speaker of water will appear to go alkali now. I will, I will go alkali. That's the hydrogen plus and the ethanoate ions will team up with each other and they will form um, methan e ethanoic acid molecules. Methanoic acid? It's late and even bad. Um, so there we go. And once again, this is an equilibrium which actually lies much more on the molecule side. So these will be reduced in number. The water equilibrium continues to do its thing uh, and it will drift and produce more uh, hydroxide ions. So you'll get an excess of hydroxide and the pH of this beaker will now be um, greater than 7. So that's the technical answer as to why these salts uh, are regarded as being acid or alkali. They themselves are not acid or alkali, but they actually, it's quite cool on a, a molecular level, they interfere with the water equilibrium, leaving you with an excess of one ion or another. Somebody from my class the other day asked, uh, well, why doesn't sodium team up with hydroxide then? Very good question. Um, there's a very simple answer to that, because sodium hydroxide, if it formed, would be a strong base. And the definition of a strong base, of course, is that it is 100% ionized. So they don't team up at all. It's a simple answer to that. And it's the same logic here for the hydrogen and the chlorine. Chloride, sorry. It would be hydrochloric acid, which is also a strong uh, acid. If anybody clever is wondering what happens if you have the salt of a, a weak base and a weak acid, then good for you. Um, it, the answer, of course, depends on the relative strengths of these two acids, uh, or acid and base, sorry, whichever one is strongest will eventually pull um, the equilibrium to that side. But the SQA aren't interested in that, unless they did it in a problem-solving context. We're talking about the SQA. Um, should play the Imperial March, shouldn't we, whenever we play the SQA, <laughs> whenever the S, the dreaded three letters are mentioned. We should be doing the Imperial March from Star Wars. Dum, dum, dum. Anyway, I won't do that. I might get super copyright. Uh, where was I going to go? I know what I was going to go before I stopped rambling. I found, what will the SQA ask you uh, about this tiny part of the course? It's only one page. Um, SQA page 70. 
So there's not that much they can ask you, but it's really nice. All these diagrams, these open-ended questions are great for these. And the explanatory questions, you know, you can draw diagrams for the, whatever salt. Um, they might ask you to explain exactly why the salt has reduced or increased the pH of the water. This is the other famous place they will pop it in. This was from 2018, I think. It was a multiple choice question. And if I remember correctly, let me just check. Uh, if I remember correctly, they were looking for the, yeah, they were looking for the alkaline salt. That's what they're looking for. So which of the following when added to water will produce an alkaline solution? That was the wording of the question. And if we have a look uh, through this, you will, Personally, I would do a quick analysis and say this uh, salt here was from sodium hydroxide and this was from sulfuric acid because it's sulfate. Don't forget the sulfite ion would be from sulfurus, which is a weak one. Um, so this is sulfuric, H2SO4. So that's basically strong and strong. So this will be pH 7. This is lithium hydroxide, strong and hydrochloric acid, also strong, pH 7. This is a weak base and a strong acid. So this will be less than seven. Um, uh, the last one, we better get it right, otherwise I've read the question wrong. This is a strong base, and this is a carboxylic acid, which is one of our weak acids. So this will be uh, greater than seven, and that, of course, is our answer. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye-bye.